Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Everyone, uh, today we are going to talk about uh, how to carry out uh, a few experiments in the lab. Polymeric biomaterials are prepared with different morphologies. Uh, some of them are made as beads, some of them are made as films, some of them as nanoparticles, and also as electrospun fibers. So, uh, I am going to show you how to make each one of them. For example, if you take beads, they are used uh, quite a lot in. Uh, bone implants, when there are bone defects, filling of bones, uh, beads are used. You can have beads uh, filled with uh, uh, antibiotics or any antibacterial material. If you are going to make films, films are used in as diaphragm patches, heart patches, um, wound dressing um, and so on. If you are looking at uh, electrospun fibers, it is used as scaffolds. It is again used uh, as uh, wound dressing material. If you are looking at nanoparticle, um, they, they are used quite a lot in drug delivery systems. So, this polymers can be prepared with different morphologies and, um, and they find applications in different uh, areas in the biomaterial field. So, we will look at uh, each one of these, uh, how it is prepared using a simple uh, standard polymer system. We will look at how to make uh, beads of calcium sulphate. For example, if you look at this, these are 4 mm calcium sulphate beads and uh, it is used in bone filling, uh, bone defects after an orthopedic uh, uh, surgery. Um, calcium sulphate as you know is uh, biocompatible, so it also prevents uh, um, biofilm formation and so on. Okay? Uh, we can also incorporate uh, drugs, antibiotics into it so that the drug gets slowly released and it prevents biofilm formation. Um, so, you need uh, around 700 microliter of water for about uh, 1 gram of calcium sulphate. You need to use uh, ultra pure water here. Okay. So, um, I have uh, I have taken 5 times that means I have taken 5 grams of calcium sulphate and uh, 3.5 ml of uh, ultra pure water because uh, look at these uh, molds. Okay, here we can make uh, 4 mm beads, here we can make 5 mm beads. So, if you want to cover as much area, then you need to correspondingly take the same ratio. So, for 1 gram of calcium sulphate, we need uh, 700 microliter of uh, ultra pure water. Okay, so, we need to mix it up well. Okay. Um, so, here I have taken uh, 5 grams of calcium sulphate. Okay, I weighed it and I take it in a uh, mixing there is a magnetic stirrer inside. So, I pour them all together inside and then, uh, and then I take uh, the ultra pure water. This is your uh, uh, pipette. So, we mix them here, as you can see slowly it starts uh, uh, getting mixed. This is called a calcium sulphate hemiacetate, so it has got a half H2O, okay. it is uh, also called plaster of Paris, we must have all used it long time back. Uh, if you have a, 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 a fracture, okay, so it easily sets very fast. And uh, if you want, you can add antibiotic, whatever type of antibiotic you want to use, so that uh, it can be used as a drug delivery system also. Especially uh, if there are any initial uh, implant-related uh, infection, that can be completely avoided. So you can see it's getting well mixed. As you can see, the calcium sulfate is completely dissolved. Uh, we can uh, stop the 
mixing. Now we can pour it. So as I said, we can take a more quantity if, depending upon how many beads you want to make. So here I am going to show you a very small uh, region. We just have to pour it on top of this. And then um, we have this applicator. So we need to tap it a little bit so that uh, the liquid flows nicely inside. So as you can see here, it is filling up the holes and uh, we need to tap it. So it's done. Very dilute. Done. Um, so I need to leave for about uh, 15 minutes so that uh, the water evaporates and uh, you get uh, solid material in this. Uh, for convenience, we have done it uh, before, so I can show you that. So this is uh, made up of uh, rubber, so it's quite flexible. It's available in the market, so we can just. Uh, um, buy it with the different uh, diameter sizes, okay. So once it is completely dried, as you can see here, we have made beads here. So sorry, we can take it out here by inverting it, see, you can see this is how the beads will come out. As you can see here, these uh, you get uh, beads of about uh, 4 millimeter in diameter, okay. and. Uh, these are beads which are used uh, uh, quite a lot in orthopedic uh, implant surgery, bone filling, bone defects filling, after a surgery, um, joint filling um, with or without antibiotics. Ah. Because uh, uh, it is biocompatible, it will not cause any adverse reaction uh, to the uh, human. Uh, and uh, we can, uh, as I said, uh, do it with the antibiotic and without. You can even think of uh, making beads of uh, hydroxyapatite and so on. This experiment is going to be a demonstration of uh, making a PVA film. PVA is a polyvinyl alcohol. It is an FDA approved polymer. It finds application in the wound dressing um, because it has got a gelling properties. So it can be made into a hydrogel, it is also used in drug delivery. So this experiment will tell how to make uh, a polyvinyl alcohol film and we can make uh, this type of uh, morphology with the different polymers. We can use water, in this case PVA dissolves in water but we can also use solvents, uh, whichever polymer dissolves in solvents then we use and then we can make films out of it. There we can also incorporate. Uh, antibiotics, we can even put uh, nanoparticles, silver nanoparticles for example which has got uh, antibacterial properties. Uh, polyvinyl alcohol is a polymer, um, this particular polymer has got a molecular weight of uh, 140,000 Dalton, so it is soluble both in uh, hot conditions as well as in cold condition. If the molecular weight goes up and up, uh, you may need to heat it up to actually dissolve it, but uh, this polymer can also go in. Uh, in cold condition. So what we do is, uh, we take uh, 5 grams of uh, PVA powder as you can see here, 5 grams of PVA okay, and then uh, we need uh, 100 ml of uh, ultra pure water. So what we do is, uh, this is again got a magnetic stirrer as you can see at the bottom okay. and then uh, we add them together. 
and then we add 100 ml of uh, water Uh, we have to here both do both agitation and heating around uh, 60, 70, 80 degrees is enough. Uh, lower the molecular weight, faster will be the uh, uh, solubilization here. As you can see, uh, mixing is taking place. We need to heat it up also here. And uh, approximately around uh, 15 minutes, uh, this uh, polymer should completely solubilize uh, in water. As you can see, uh, PVA is completely dissolved uh, in uh, water. Once it is done, we need a watch glass on which, uh, into which we are going to pour the solution. Uh, the diameter can be bigger or smaller depending upon the size of uh, uh, film you want to have and of course you need corresponding amount of uh, the PVA solution also. So you need to place it and pour it uniformly inside. Hmm? So you can pour it inside uniformly so that it spreads. Okay. And then uh, we need to leave it uh, like that. So the solution completely covers the entire uh, um, surface uniformly and then uh, we need to leave it for uh, 24 hours so that the water completely evaporates and we can get the film which can be peeled out. After 24 hours, the solvent uh, would have evaporated or in this case water and uh, we will be able to peel out the film very nicely as you can see. see the PVA film here, uh, it is uh, it's got a gelling property that means it will swell when you add water and it is used in uh, wound as a wound dressing and uh, if it is coated with antibiotic it will also have antibacterial property and so on. So similar approach can be adopted for making films of uh, several other polymers like uh, PLA, PLGA but uh, you may have to use solvents in those cases also. Okay. This is a nano fiber electro spinning unit. We can make uh, polymers or polymer blends uh, as a fiber form in nano scale. Um, typically, if you look at uh, a nano fiber mat, of a polymer, it look like this. Uh, it is very useful in um, wound healing applications as well as uh, for scaffold design and uh, nowadays a lot of uh, interest is shown on electro spinning because they are in nano scale. So there will be more surface area to volume. We can even incorporate drugs, we can even incorporate uh, growth factors so that cells grow very well. So what is the principle of this? We take a polymer solution here okay, and uh, the solution comes out through the needle. There is a voltage applied at the needle tip. The solution hits the collector where there is another voltage. So because of the uh, positive and negative, the solution travels and hits the collector. As you can see, this is an aluminum foil collector. So we start collecting the fibers and uh, we adjust the various parameters to get nano scale fibers uh, in the collector. So there are many parameters you need to control here. The voltage you are applying here, the distance between the um, needle tip and the collector plate and the flow rate of uh, the polymer that is coming out, 
we can adjust the temperature of this chamber. So, all these are parameters which one needs to adjust and of course, uh, the polymer solution itself is there, we need to adjust the co composition of that solution. So, that we end up getting a nano scale fiber uniform fiber. Uh, there is a control software here which controls the electrospin unit, several parameters can be controlled here. For example, the volume of the liquid polymer solution you have taken is given here, the flow rate at which the polymer solution is coming out of the needle is adjusted here, the diameter of the syringe, the duration how long you want to run it. So, this is a flat plate, in case you have a plate which is rotating it is called a rotating mantle, we can um, con set the speed of the rotating mantle also here and also we can tell how long we want to run this uh, um, electro spinning unit also by setting here. Okay. We have to fill the polymer solution in this syringe which also has a needle. This is not like a doctor's needle because uh, it is blunt so that the solution can come out when uh, there is an applied voltage. Here again we are planning to uh, make electro spin fibers of uh, polyvinyl alcohol that is PVA. Okay. We take uh, 5 grams of uh, polyvinyl alcohol of about uh, 140 kilo Dalton molecular weight in 100 ml water. Um, if you heat it slightly with about 10 to 15 minutes it completely dissolves. So, I am going to take this polymer solution into this uh, syringe. This syringe is uh, filled with PVA solution, we place it here, after placing the needle in the holder and tightening the screws, um, this is the positive electrode to which the needle is placed, this is the collector plate on which we have aluminum foil for easy removal, then we place it in the collector and then tighten the screws. And uh, we clamp it with the negative. Let me explain these controllers here. Uh, this is a heater in case you want to heat the chamber to a higher temperature. The temperature inside the chamber is displayed here. Uh, this switch is for the lamp here. When we are doing electro spinning, we will switch off this and uh, we will use the halogen lamp which is shown there okay? because uh, you can see the fibers coming out only through the halogen lamp. And then uh, this switch is for the controller. And this is for the exhaust because uh, when you are using solvent, you need to remove the solvent vapor and this one is for the uh, setting up of the high voltage system. Okay. So, here it displays the voltage and here it displays the current. We set the voltage and current uh, so that uh, we get very fine nano scale uh, size uh, fibers and also the fibers are uh, loose so that it does not uh, sort of bind to each other. Now, we switch, switch off this lamp and switch on the halogen lamp, shut the door and we have to initiate the run through the computer so that uh, the polymer solution starts coming out. Then we adjust the voltage and the current. Run. Run 
Stop. Um, we increase the current little bit and then start increasing the voltage. As you can see the voltage is increasing. Once we have collected enough fibers, we switch off uh, this uh, machine, we remove the voltage plates and then uh, we remove the collector slowly and uh, we can see the deposit of the polymer. We can see the deposit of the polymer yeah. nanofibers on this aluminum foil. We can nicely peel it off as you can see here from the aluminum foil and uh, this, is a, this is a nanofiber of uh, polyvinyl alcohol. Um, if we look under a scanning electron microscope, we should be able to know the diameter of the fiber, it should be in the nano region. So this product can be used um, for wound healing purposes, burn injuries and it can also be used as a scaffold material for growing cells of various types. I am going to demonstrate how to make a beta glucon nanoparticle. Glucon is uh, also known as a curlon, this beta glucon and uh, it is produced uh, by bacteria. You will also find it in uh, some of the food products also. Glucon is approved by FDA to be used as a gelling agent and it also has immunomodulatory properties. So it is well approved and uh, when we make nanoparticles with the beta glucon, we can have uh, drugs encapsulated, sometimes we can have flavoring agents colorants and so on. So when we make these nanoparticles, they will be in the order of uh, less than 100 nanometers. We have to add uh, polyvinyl alcohol uh, to stabilize these nanoparticles, otherwise uh, these nanoparticles may agglomerate together and um, it may form a bigger particle size. Okay, so I am going to show how to make uh, this uh, beta glucon nanoparticle. This is not water soluble, it is soluble in um, alkali, it is also soluble in uh, acids like formic acid. So we are going to dissolve this in formic acid. So I have taken 40 milligrams of uh, curdlan or beta glucon, I have taken uh, 2 ml of formic acid and uh, we are going to mix them at room temperature. Um, using a magnetic stirrer. As you can see, this is the magnetic stirrer. I put, put it inside and then um, I stir it so we stir it for about um, 5 to 10 minutes so that uh, it completely uh, dissolves into it as I said the beta glucon is not soluble in uh, water 
so it's only soluble in alkali or uh, even mild uh, formic acid. So we do this for about 5 minutes. Uh, we need to make a, a PVA solution, really PVA is uh, polyvinyl alcohol, I am using uh, 140 kilo Dalton. PVA will try to stabilize uh, this uh, beta glucon nanoparticles. So PVA, I have it here, as you can see it is a fine powder and then um, 0.5 grams of PVA I take. and I take uh, 50 ml of water I again stir it but uh, here I have to heat it to 50 degree centigrade and again stir it here and I have to heat it to 50 degree centigrade Okay, so for another 5 to 10 minutes, so I set the temperature, yeah. because PVA is not soluble in cold water, so we are heating it to 50 degree centigrade. Now I transfer this PVA solution, now I need to add the beta glucon formic acid drop wise using a syringe into this okay so i have uh, previously prepared uh, beta glucon in formic acid okay as you can see here beta glucon in formic acid so now i will take it in a syringe As I said, PVA will try to stabilize the nanoparticle. As you can see here, small white, uh, that is the nanoparticle of uh, beta glucon. Can you see this? We need to use the probe sonicator to arrive at uh, nanoparticles of uh, beta glucon, okay, stabilized by polyvinyl alcohol. This is the probe sonicator, and uh, we have to keep our sample inside. The sonication will be done for uh, 5 minutes, uh, the sonication will be on for 9 seconds, and 1 second off. Because a lot of heat is produced, we have to keep uh, the whole sample inside the ice bath as you can see here this is the control unit for the probe sonicator so we need to set this control we are going to sonicate for 5 minutes it will not be continuous there will be pulses and then stop but then every 9 seconds there will be pulse and 1 second there will be off we will switch on the control unit of the probe sonicator We will set the sonication time for 5 minutes. We have set the time for 5 minutes. Now we will set the pulse. Pulse on for 9 seconds. Pulse off for 1 second. Enter. So it's got pulse on for 9 seconds, pulse off for 1 second. It's going to be done at a cold temperature.
when the, once the sonicator tip is well dipped, we start uh, the control unit and the sonication proceeds so that uh, you get uh, nanoparticles. For 5 minutes, we sonicate uh, uh, the sample. Once uh, the sonication is done, we have to centrifuge. So, we transfer the material into a falcon tube to collect uh, the uh, nanoparticles. This goes into your centrifuge and uh, centrifugation is done for 10 minutes at 10,000 rpm and later on to a lyophilizer um, where moisture is removed and we get a very fine product at uh, minus 60 degree centigrade overnight. The nanoparticle uh, which we prepared using uh, sonication needs to be recovered from the liquid. We use a centrifuge here. Uh, we have to centrifuge at 10,000 rpm for about 10 minutes. Use an adapter and place the falcon tube and we also have to balance it with another uh, empty tube. And then we can close the centrifuge. Uh, this is a lyophilizer where uh, the wet uh, nanoparticles can be completely dried by removing the moisture at about uh, minus 80 degrees centigrade and this is run overnight so that all the water gets removed. After centrifugation and lyophilization, we get uh, a dried nanoparticle of uh, beta-glucon or curdlan stabilized by polyvinyl alcohol. As you can see here, this is our product. If we incorporate drugs, then uh, it will be a drug loaded beta glucon. We can incorporate uh, uh, food and flavoring, even coloring agent. So it goes in, it can go into food industries as well. And um, as I said originally, beta glucon has immunomodulatory properties, it's got anti inflammatory properties, and it's been approved by FDA. I'm going to demonstrate how to prepare iotocaraginin and beta cyclic glucon hydrogel. Hydrogels can be used for wound healing, drug delivery, drug encapsulation. This iota carrageenan is a polysaccharide made up of sulfogalactan and it is obtained from marine copper fibers with the almost 20,000 molecular weight. And this cyclic beta glucon is produced by bacteria. It's got uh, 10 to 12 glucose in a cyclic form. So the molecular weight will be around 1200 to 1400. Together they will act as a hydrogel. It will be very hydrophilic. It will be able to absorb and retain moisture and the beta linkage in the glucon also will act as a um, aid for wound healing uh, as an immunomodulatory and so on actually. Okay. So we start uh, preparing this uh, carrageenan beta glucon hydrogel. You will have 75% um, uh, carrageenan, 25% glucon. This beta cyclic glucon is water soluble, whereas uh, the beta linear glucon or curdlan is not water soluble. This glucon is water soluble. That is why we are using uh, only 25% and the 75% will be the carrageenan and later on we will be cross-linking with the glutaraldehyde. So initially we start uh, with the 4 ml water, okay, this is a hot water bath. So we heat this water to 50 degrees centigrade. We take uh, carrageenan. Fifty six point four five milligrams of carrageenan. We add to this uh, hot water one 
Now we raise the temperature to 70 degrees centigrade for about 15 minutes so that the carrageenan completely dissolves in it. We can intermittently mix this. Um, this is a mixer. As you can see here, we can mix this. And then again heat it up so that uh, it is completely dissolved. Once that is done, we add uh, cyclic beta glucon, which is 18.75 milligrams to this. Again, we heat it up to 70 degrees centigrade, mixing it from time to time. We add 0.75 milliliters of uh, glutaraldehyde. Glutaraldehyde is a cross-linking agent, so it will cross-link uh, the carrageenan and uh, the beta-glucon. That is, this is 1 percent, so we add it to this. You can pour this into your watch glass. And leave it for air drying for 12 hours, that is overnight. This is the dried, overnight dried carrageenan beta glucon film. We need to peel this, so we use uh, 70 percent methanol water, spray it on top. Now it is easy for you to peel it out. As you can see, this is the glutaraldehyde cross link iota carrageenan cyclic beta glucon, the ratio of 75 to 25. We call this hydrogel because uh, it will swell when we add water to this. When we add water to it, it should retain water and swell. That is why it is called a hydrogel. As you can see, the jewel has swollen, taking up a lot of water, and uh, this property helps in designing uh, wound healing uh, patches with this uh, carrageenan and beta glucon.